Hey, internet friends. Back in 1932, Aldous Huxley published a futuristic science fiction novel called Brave New World, in which citizens of a dystopian future endure government-engineered social ranks alongside major scientific advancements in reproductive technology. Alpha embryos are engineered to become the leaders of the world state and each lower caste has their own place in society for which they are conditioned. But in order for everyone to efficiently fall into place for a fluid society, individuality and emotion must be conditioned out, meaning there are no lasting relationships, no monogamy, and no love because everyone belongs to everyone else. The novel opens by telling us about the Bokanovsky process, where the hatchery is able to produce thousands of nearly identical human embryos engineered through artificial wombs. The gestation period of the embryo involves traveling in bottles along a conveyor belt in a factory, and thereafter, children are indoctrinated to belong to one of the five cases based on a number of criteria. Among other major takeaways from Brave New World, Huxley shared a very early description of human cloning and hijacking the human genome in order to mass produce a complicit society. Since the introduction of Dolly the Sheep in 1996, Everyone knows that scientists have been able to clone animals for a while, so why not humans? When has science ever let ethics get in the way of what they regard as progress? Alongside Brave New World, there have been hints that human cloning is entirely possible and has been done before. One example is a movie called Boys from Brazil, released in 1978. Boys from Brazil is about Dr. Mingala who clones Hitler 95 times. While the plot is kind of far out there, the cloning process described within the movie is so incredibly specific and accurate, giving precise instruction and description of the nuclear transfer cloning process. In the movie, Mingala hopes to raise the resulting boys in Brazil, giving them childhoods identical to Hitler's with the ultimate goal of forming the Fourth Reich. At the time, everyone believed the movie to be fiction because the plot was so far out there. But prominent Nazis and German scientists really did move to South America after World War II, and North America for that matter, in the form of Operation Paperclip. Playing God and hijacking the human genome is a cult of science solution looking for a problem. And that problem has arrived. The fertility crisis. It's a hellaciously perfect mix of infertility, chemical concoctions, feminism and diversity and acceptance. The US birth rate is now at its lowest point in 30 years. Studies have shown that sperm counts among men in the industrialized world fell nearly 60% from 1973 to 2011. In part, it's because of the chemicals used in consumer products and their effects on the hormonal system. Other factors include obesity, smoking, and alcohol. These toxic chemicals are in water bottles and food packaging, electronic devices, personal care products, cleaning supplies, and many other items we use regularly. And these consumer products began being produced in increasing numbers after 1950, when sperm counts and fertility began their decline. There is growing concern that vaccines, specifically the COVID vaccine, will cause infertility amongst men and women. Perhaps the hesitancy comes from a very recent history of unwanted sterilization programs, specifically the United States federally funded sterilization programs that took place across 32 states throughout the 20th century. Furthermore, women are postponing motherhood to pursue their careers, with it being harder to have children as women age. Over the last several decades, we've seen IVF, test tube babies, and fertility treatments proposed as solutions to the ongoing fertility crisis. But now they're taking it a step further to cater to anyone and everyone. So here's where we arrive at the topic of same-sex couples who wish to raise a child, all of which I say to say there's a call for a solution to this problem. And Israel has got it. Here's the pitch straight from Haaretz. Male couples will be able to have a child together of their own flesh and bone. One parent will provide the sperm cell, the other will donate the skin cell that will become an egg. In the past, gay male couples have been able to have a child through the use of a surrogate. Highlighted in this recent story of the California Thruple, a polyamorous gay trio who hired a surrogate to have their baby and all three of the dad's names were on the birth certificate. Israeli scientists have figured out a way to eliminate the woman from the equation entirely. They're reporting that they've succeeded in growing a mammal embryo outside of the womb, an embryo not hidden by the uterine wall. Specifically, they were able to do this with a mouse. 
If they can do this with a mouse embryo, they can consider growing human embryos in order to use their organs, like harvesting a heart, pancreas, or kidney from a human grown outside the womb. Or they can grow an embryo that will become a child for a same-sex couple who wishes to forego the use of a surrogate. I have a few thoughts on this story. Of course, there are questions about organ trafficking and the ethics of playing God, but I do wonder if any technological or scientific developments they announce as new, if they've had them for a while and they're just now deciding to tell the public now. I believe the ultimate goal of science as a religion is to try to play God, to pervert God's creation. By the way, whoever sees the artificial womb method as their most viable option, have you ever heard of adoption? There are plenty of children out there waiting to be adopted. This whole thing, especially from the standpoint of science experiment artificial womb babies as a way to, for gay couples to have their own child, really strikes me as some days of Lot, days of Noah kind of stuff. With days of Lot, I'm referring to the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, which I've covered on my channel. And with days of Noah, I'm specifically referring to Genesis chapter six, when the Bible describes what was happening in the world when Noah was building the ark. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be an 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were men of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So these were the conditions right before the great flood, with the Bible saying that the wickedness of man was great, and the earth was filled with violence. But how come men were all of a sudden so violent and wicked? Why does this chapter specifically mention sons of God as separate from men? And why does it mention giants? The traditional view of the early church was that the sons of God were fallen angels who took human wives and produced giants, indicating an instance of hijacking the human genome, or you could call it manipulating our DNA, the godly line mixing with an ungodly line. This interpretation might sound a little out there to some, but how out there is it really? According to this passage, we could argue that the whole reason that God sent the Great Flood was because they were trying to take over and pervert human reproduction, and the result yielded a violent and wicked population. What do you think, internet friends? What do you think of Israel's latest invention? Do you think human cloning is real or that it's been happening for a while and they're just now starting to roll out the disclosure? Let me know. You know, I always look forward to your comments. Thank you for watching, subscribing, and supporting me on Patreon. Bye.